Hallelujah, glory be to God. I'm a
tonight and Lord we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be accepted before you Lord our rock and our redeemer into your hands I commit the preacher who is going to preach tonight and as I interpret father it's my prayer that your word will go through and your name will be glorified have your way Lord have your way in our ministry in the name of Jesus in the my name of Jesus be thou glorified speak of the living God Oh, we worship you, Lord. Bless your name. Oh, son, in the book. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, I want to welcome you all in the presence of God. As we have prayed, we know the Spirit of the Lord is with us. And nothing by all means will exalt itself above the name of the Lord. And I want us to go into the Word straight away. Today's service is different. We are going to interpret uh, my wife here will be preaching, mommy will be preaching, and I'll be interpreting, hallelujah, so we can have all languages together by God's grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Praise God. Praise God. We want to thank God tonight. We want to thank God because He has been good to us. And glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to continue sharing about being encouraged and strengthened. No And to be determined. <coughs> As we know today, it was the Palm Sunday. Excuse me. And as we remember Jesus going through Jerusalem. But as we walked through Jerusalem. They prepared and they laid their clocks on the floor as they celebrated and were waiting to celebrate Jesus. What does that day remind you? Uh, many things we have done on that day. But I have come to encourage you. Among the, thing, the things that were done on that day and the things that were done, you today to a part of what happened then on the Palm Sunday, whether you are aware of it or not. Let's go straight into the Word and read the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter number 21 from verse number 1 to verse number 11 I'll read in English now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Beth Bethphage at the Mount of Olives then Jesus sent two disciples 
saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Lose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by prophet saying, by the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly, and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fall of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their cloaks on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes went before, and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. <coughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Je Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Hallelujah. Amen. What does that show us, brethren? And je, as Jesus was going through Jerusalem, he took and he sent his disciples to bring the, the, the donkey and the colt. But as they were going, the disciples, I can imagine the disciples saying, how can you send us? They will say, don't take it, because don't take these donkeys, because they don't belong to you. But he said, go and tell them I need it. That I sent you for them. I need those donkeys and the coat. You might be their brethren. You have heard the gospel. And you also feel in your heart that you have a calling upon your life that you are supposed to do before God. Many ministers have come to you. They have spoken to your life. But something this has discouraged you since then. No. You just hardened your heart and you said, I'm not going to do anything. I have nothing to do with anything to do with God. But today I've come to encourage you that as Jesus goes through Jerusalem, as you remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's your heart that God needs. He doesn't care how much you are discouraged. It's right there that God wants to exhort you, lift you, encourage you, and says, come, and I want to use you. Whatever he wants to use you to do is actually inside you now. Has he sent the disciples? Disciples and said, Go and bring the donkey and the coat. The, the same way God is inviting you to come to serve him. For the donkey never knew what it was going to carry. You too might be there and you don't even know what you are carrying and you don't know what God has put upon you. But what God has imparted or impacted in you is what the world needs. But if you lose hope and strength right now. You would have put into trouble and into danger the salvation of uh, the gospel of salvation. What you are carrying inside you will be hindered. 
It's called that being that your relative was going to benefit from it. Or your friends were going to be encouraged in that. But today I want to encourage you that rise up as Jesus is going through Jerusalem. It's you that he wants to use. It's you that he wants to use to take his word. Out. Be strong and very courageous. Whatever had demotivated de you, anything that had oppressed you, and you backslid and you said you had given up, right there, God wants to support you and encourage you. He wants to make you that that you don't even know that you have. For those that kept the donkey and the coat, they looked after them very well. Never, little did they know that it was going to carry Jesus. But at that moment, when Jesus wanted to use that donkey, he simply sent and said, bring them to me. You have heard all the gospel. And so if the Lord has invited to you to serve him now, where are you standing, my brother? Are you going to accept to give your life? Or are you going to say no? let me wait. Brothers and sisters, remember that God has the 7,000. We saw that when Elijah was losing hope, God arose. God cannot leave you when you are so weak. He is there to strengthen you and encourage you. We do not want him to bring his 7,000 than while it was your opportunity. <coughs> and yet we are here to do God's will. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. John Let us go to the Gospel of John, chapter number one. From verse number the Gospel of John, chapter number one. Verse 45 and 46. Verse number 45 and verse number 46. Phil found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. <coughs> and Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He asked, uh, can anything good come from Nazareth? That might be the same question people have been asking you everywhere you go. That can anything good come from that clan, that group, that family of people? So you have something that falls you of being despised. And it's what is hindering you from doing what God called. You to it is what is hindering you from doing the word of God. Could it be the one that has hindered you from preaching the gospel to your family that they might not give their lives to Christ? But I want you to know that God knew you. To put you in that picture and to put you in that family. He chose you for himself and he, he, want, he knows what you're going to be. Today I want you to think there was a time when you felt that you heard from God that, that even when you walked you at the place of work you felt you had to do something in the presence of God but in the middle of the journey something happened with the word and you were weakened and you backslid 
They might have spoken about your tribe, about you, or wherever you came from. You lost strength and your soul was hit hard. It was the same voice that says nothing good can come from that family. But remember, that's where our Lord Jesus Christ came from. He actually came to save even those people that used to live in his vicinity. But when they said that, they did not know that what they were doing actually was the source of salvation. <coughs> that was going to redeem them and that was going to save their own families. Brethren, what does that show us? To be encouraged, to be strengthened, that even if Jesus had not done the same, we would, we would not have been saved. Now look into the way Jesus traveled his journey and stand in that position. Get that determination that has went through that mockery and challenge. And be, I believe that I too will overcome. And then you rise and be strengthened. God doesn't care about your looks, He doesn't even care whether you are rich or poor. It doesn't matter to him where you grew up, whether you were educated or illiterate. If he has called you and he has called, uh, chosen you, he has the power to make you what he created you to be. So I say now, be strong and be, be very courageous. Arise and begin to walk in the hope of what God prepared you and created you to be. Do you you know how many times God told Joshua to be strong and very courageous? It's about seven times. But why did he insist on encouraging Joshua? He had chosen him, he had seen him that was going to do a great job for the kingdom. You too, brethren. You have got many people. Uh, to encourage you. But every time you want to arise, someone will hit you and attack you. And so you reached a level and you're saying, let me be like this. I think that's how I was created. And so you created something that to replace what God had created you to do. And you also enjoy and be comfortable in what th that kind of life. Today I want to tell you that arise now. Uh, be determined. Uh, dress up a new garment. And say today I will be become that which God has created me to be. This kind of garment of despising myself, look, underlooking myself, uh, belittling myself, I burn it with fire in the name of Jesus. Have that faith in you, see yourself becoming that which God has created you, see yourself being that. We need to be determined, brother. We see that the life we are in. Life is not easy. The world is bringing its own. The people bring their own. Everything is 
out of form. And the intention of all attacks is to take us away from the love of God. To destroy our faith. But when all that is trying to attack us, they want to destroy your strength. They want to put fear, demonic fear into you. To assure you that you, you are, you be, whatever you are believing is nothing is vanity. But you and I know that what we believe is life eternal. That without God we cannot manage anything. But we hide in His presence. If you hide away from His presence, how do you think you will survive? We cannot survive without God, brother. That's why I say strengthen yourself and get new strength. Because that's the strength you need to continue. That's the power you need to stand in salvation. That's the life you need that you come to a point of saying, when I pray, heavens hear me. Look at yourself and think about your life now. Don't My courage just stopped from there. Well, well, there is a time where there is a point where I look at and say, at a certain point, my courage was. Hindered or stop at this point. For there was a time when you felt that you had that strength. You were very ready to go anywhere to preach the gospel. But what is that that hindered you today? We want to pray against that hindrance in the name of Jesus so you can go back to where you had God. So when we look at Peter, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 4, verse number... Chapter 14. Chapter 14. Yes. Verse number... Verse 22 to 31. Chapter 14, verse number 22 to 31. I'm reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, from verse number 32 to verse number 31, 22 to 31. Chapter what? 14. 14. Matthew. Yes, sir. Matthew 14. Let me begin from verse chapter, Matthew chapter 14, mm. verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? Yeah. Uh, well, verse 22. If I come from verse number 22, okay. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when Jesus, and, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is the ghost. And they cried out of fear. They out of fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, 
he walked on the water to go to, go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Abo Luganda. So when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, he was strengthened. He saw himself walking on the water. And so you were like that. So when Jesus came into your life, and you, and you confessed him as your Lord and Savior, and you, you rose, you stood up, and you discovered who you were supposed to be or what you were supposed to be. When you discovered that, you probably started doing it. It could have been at work, it could have been at a place of work or ministry in any area that God had put you in. And so you saw this ministry really going on well. And people had started talking about your ministry, commending it and saying you did it well. But amidst this journey or that journey, there came a challenge. Or oh, you probably were rejected. And you decided to give up. So you decided to deteriorate. So what amazes me is that when we are backsliding or deteriorating in what God has called us to do, you sometimes feel it and you know it. You will know that, oh, I'm almost moving away from the place. You cannot actually tell pastors at times that please pray for me. They pray for you and even encourage you. So what the devil does is to oppress you more and more such that your spirit, soul and body loses strength. Strength. To a point that you won't even be able to see the hand of Jesus stretched out towards you saying, come, let me hold on. Hold As they push their prayers and they push their misfortunes or curses. Oh, as they pray for you and God stretches out your hand, I pray their pardon. What the devil does is to put words in you, instigate fear into you, and put whatever thing possible to make you feel bad. So before you know it, you backslide and even sink into the sea. But tonight I want you to encourage your spirit, lift your spirit, be strong. And because God wants you right there where he found you and he said, walk towards me when you're weak. There is enough power to enable you to reach wherever you want to reach. Do not look at the situation that is discouraging you, but arise and come to me. That's what Jesus is saying. So when you look at what is surrounding you, you just Turn and even take away your hand and say, I won't be able to do it. You have seen all the dreams. But you have still said, I cannot do it. It's so big for me. God cannot give you what you cannot afford. Because God doesn't make any mistake. As we grow up, brethren, 
Fena fena tuina ebi ntuka tonda vya tuisa mongo chimanyo vato chimanyo. God enables us to go through things whether we are aware of it or not. Abuwa lugana nze njaga loko okuguli da kurugendo rangi. I want to tell you about my journey briefly. When, when naringa ncha soma mu high school. When I was still in high school. Nafuna, nafuna, nafuna okwe simbao nembera, nembera mother domo ngandimu senior one. I stood as a mother domo and I was elected to me mother domo when I was still in senior one. Na yenga wondaba, nze nango kubera mother domo ngankuli daba no kubaku senior one upaka senior six. As you see me at that age, leading to, uh, students from senior one to senior six. Sidi muwamvu nyo. I was not so tall. Na yenga wali waba, aba wamvu abansi. There were those who were taller than me. But they said you're going to be our mother dog. But out of all, little did I know what God wanted me to do. I sat down and I said, now I've been given leadership as a prefect. But how am I going to manage this assignment? So when I went to senior two, I was re-elected to be the mother dome again. By the time I finished senior four, they never allowed me to go to stand on any other position, no, much, no matter how much I wanted to. And as you see me, and by then you remember we used even to cut off our hair. And by then I was very short and very tiny. I know myself. And I don't fear what God has created me to be. And I don't feel ashamed because I know that's how God created me and there was a purpose for which he created me. And brethren, when you get someone encouraging you and they lie to you, do not lose your strength. You might say, oh, they wanted to encourage me. But if you know that who God has created you to be, arise and say whatever they have encouraged me in, let me encourage myself too. I led those students. So in every week they used to carry out an, a, 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 an inspection to see how clean and tight they were. And as I told you, I used to look at these older students of senior six. And I told them we need to clean here, we need to tie it up and make our beds properly. So we could get a lot of marks during that weekend of inspection. Some of them refused. But I, I used to handle it myself. So because I wanted to make sure that my dome was the best. But I used to do all that. But I didn't I didn't, and little did I know where God was going to position me. He was training me and giving me my, uh, uh, determination that what I'm, whatever I'm going to entrust you with, you have to do it. So, brother, in every time I feel like I feel I'm, I'm, I'm losing strength, I'm discouraged, I remember that training I went through as a little girl. If God entrusted me with that position, even when I didn't know what I was doing, and for four years I was carrying out that office, and every time I wanted to go away, they said, no, you are the one who wants to be our mother. Daughter. And other people said, oh, they, they say, don't worry, even if you don't do it, she will do it for you. 
Bwembanga nachikola. If I did that. Kati nachivamu. And now I'm out of that. Kati wongamba nchi embele genda kunzi ruso kole choka tonda chiyantu tido kukola. If you tell me that the situation I'm going through is going to make me run away from what God has called me to do. Awo boli imbia. That will be a lie. Bwembanga saso wala kufamu assignment yansi. If I did not go away from an assignment that was not even the gospel. Nenji kolo kufa. Nenji kolo kumare miya kenya. And I did it for four years. Nga tete kuli konti bagenda kunsa Sipa wabula nkole leda Kulaba ntino Banda banange tufu no uwa And it was only charity And to make sure we met We get some some kind of victory In terms of max Kati hate wanawali empere Yovula muguta guwa What about here where there is a reward Of eternal life Aboru gana buli omwa ina Waita ukutende kwa katonda weya puisa Every one of us go through some training Or whatever training God has made you go through Na yegu oba wasobo lo kuwangu but if you all you are able to overcome when you are able to overcome when you are able to overcome when you are able to overcome hold on to that and refer to that and say because of that I am going to do what God wants me to do you say that I am not going to be discouraged they might prophesy upon you and they say you are going to be a pastor's wife they would have seen that you can actually do it thank God in the temple I thank God nobody prophesied upon me. I probably would have said, no, I cannot be that. But the way God did his own things, and he positioned me in the way I am. And I asked myself, will I manage that? When I look at where I came from, whatever he used me in my life, so when I gather all together, and then I say, Lord, use me. If you, you enabled me to overcome those, I, there was no vote of confidence, but I was able to work and there was no striking vote. These two will be able, uh, I'll be able to do this too. Look at yourself in that way. Begin to encourage yourself and say, I'm determined. I'm going to serve the Lord no, one, no matter what. I'm going to stand in that grace, the one he gave me before he was told to do it again. He will empower me, he will support me, and he will help me go through it. Our God will never leave you nor forsake you. Let us read another scripture in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 41, verse number 13. Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 13, the Bible says, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Hallelujah. Amen. That God is going to hold your hand. Whether it is seen that... Uh, defeated you or, 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 or oppressed you and made you sink. If he is the one that make, made you backslide and so your hope was oppressed and destroyed. You have no anchor to hold on to to serve the Lord. And he sent you out of God's presence. Our God brethren is so faithful. He is so gracious and merciful and full of mercy. He will wash you pure. He will cleanse you and take away everything that has been discouraging you. He told us that he's going to hold on us with his might hand. So you need to hold on to his might hand. And you say, I will hold on to this hand. 
never let go of this hand until it takes me back to the original place. Until you have used me. Until you have made me to be to become in this life. Now we see the life of Job. When you read Job chapter 1 from verse number 18 onwards. You can read all of it, but Job went through a lot of challenges. He reached a certain point and even his own wife suggested that he would give up on God and die. But how tough that situation, he told his rags and say and fell before the Lord and glorified him. He praised him. Brother, even the person next to you might be the one discouraging you. There are some things that I reach a certain point and they have disorganized my soul. And I asked Pastor, how would you see this? That even if I want pastor to be on my side, as long as that thing is not right, he will say, no, leave that alone, it will, that too shall come to pass. So I gather myself and say, I realize, okay, I'm on my own now. So if you are seen it that way, I will not go into that. So if, if I go alone, nobody will, he will not support me. So let me leave it. But after meditating upon it and then saying, why did I expect him to do that anyway? And then I realized, oh, I think he was right not to support me in this. And that there are some other things that you expect everyone to support you. And at a certain sometimes it's something that will be taken away from the, the, the right way. So when I overcome that, I'll really see that it was vanity. Everyone has got a situation. Everyone has different challenges. But I made this that challenge. Brethren, brothers and sisters arise. God is waiting upon you. It's you that God wants. It's you that he wants to use. What you have in you, he created it in you alone. If you don't bring it out, nobody will do it for you. Brethren, we had someone, uh, the preacher that preached, uh, shared with us, Pastor Joshua. That some of us, the life we live today, that avoid being replaced, that's how we say it. He put it. Mm -hmm. That your calling, if you have not done what your calling is about, God will eventually replace someone who should do it. Will do it. But after your life, where will your crown come from if you fail? We do not want to be in that, brethren. In your littleness or when you see that you cannot, you are not able. God sees that you are able to do it. Do not be discouraged. Do not lose hope. Arise because the one that called you is faithful. Today you have been challenged with a rejection. But that rejection doesn't necessarily mean that God has rejected you. That Jesus was rejected. He was opposed. 
And yet he was the author of salvation. If he went through that challenge, and he told us, I have overcome, if he overcame, you too will overcome it. Because he dwells in you, he lives in you. Because he's the one that's going to give you strength. In you, you don't have the strength to do what he called you to do. But he's waiting upon you to call upon him and say, Dear Lord, give me strength. Help me through this too. If you, for example, work in a hospital, God did not put you there in vain. He has, he has a, a, a purpose for which he wants you to fulfill. I know they don't want to pray or even share the word. But the time he has given you, whether it's break time or lunch, he has given you that moment. They give it to you to do whatever you want. What the devil does is to put heaviness on you and start to remind you all useless kind of stories. And then he makes you even forget to pray during break time. As you begin to share the word of God with your fellows. Some will rise up against you. The sword they will hit you with. Blood. So you start seeing yourself losing the job. And so you give up and say, I'm not pray again. We see Daniel, brother, that he was so challenged, but he refused to give up. Where have you persisted in your life? Persist and hold on to whether you lose a job, but you must insist on serving God. God will not fail to give you a job if you are give you are fired because of the gospel did you because he's the one that positioned you and is the one that knows now, brethren, we might get an excuse in life that will discourage us and tell us or uh, uh, make us say, I will not do it. I will not serve God. Sometimes for me, I give excuses of children. And I will say, everyone knows I have young children. But there is a voice that always comes from behind. And the voice says, oh, you pleaded with me when you had no children. And now I have given you the children, you have started giving excuses. I just arise and say, God forgive me. And I say, Lord, have mass upon me here, young minister. That there are many excuses, excuses and everyone says it. For I have not even read the Bible from Genesis. How can I benefit? How can I serve the Lord? There are many excuses. There are many good things to do in the kingdom of God. But there are also many excuses. But all that will be finished and will vanish. When you look at the reward and say, I don't deserve that because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. You will want a time to be turned back and there, was, there will be no more time for you. What is it that God gave you and make, made you backslide? And you became lazy and instead you said, no, I'm just looking after myself. I'm not going to do that in the kingdom. And then you went into hiding. That's what I want you to come out of and come back in the breast. Be strong. 
strong and dress up afresh. Rise up again and say, I'm going to serve the Lord. That I'm going to travel and go where God wants me to go. I am going to do what God wants me to do. Brethren, the, the excuses will always be there. The world brings excuses you to have on your own excuse. But if you refuse to believe in who God has created you to be, nobody is going to impose you, uh, be you believing in yourself because you know yourself better. Now, that's why I tell you today, dress up, put on your new strength. After you put on your strength, you stand, put your faith in God, and you tell him, I am back, Lord. Please raise me up from here. Use me where I am now. I have hidden enough, but nothing has helped me. Even where I hid from, I have not got peace from there. Now I ask you that you give me new strength. That I will arise so I can help in the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, God is going to make you useful. Wherever you backslid, God is going to, uh, to, to order your steps. And what amazes, the, the moment you arise, where the strength will come, you will not even know. The grace will come from where you, don't ex you least expect it. The one that used to pray. God is renewing that prayer, that, 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 that prayer life in you. Or you, between there, you gave up and said, oh, prayer doesn't work. Once you are revived and you strengthened again, even if you pray for five minutes, you will see things happening. But every time you are discouraged, the devil will rejoice. He will say this one is finished. But we are not going to give chance to the devil. We are going to rise and be determined. We are going to be strengthened. Our souls are going to be strengthened. And we are going to go and do what God called. Us to do. Because every one of us has been created or was created for a purpose. It is our God that never makes mistakes. Wherever He has put you, He has He needs you to do something. He wants you to He wants you to do something. We do not want God to rise up stones to begin to worship Him. He has given us voices. You, you are waiting for God to give you the voice of the person you think sings better than you. you. You cannot get someone's voice. You, remember, you are waiting for when you will be taller. Now you are above the level of being just told. You just have to know that God called you the way you are. God loved you the way you are. God created you in his image. Whether I'm short or tall. Whether I'm light or dark skin. That's how we created you. Have you ever imagined that, for example, if I was taller than I, what I am, how would I have looked? You might even think, probably I would not have been able. Okay, let's say he gave you that level of being short. Rejoice because when you stand on the ground, you affirm probably the taller one that is not firm enough. So it's you that he wants to go through where the taller ones 
have to bend for yes. you just go through strength. You have to bend for you just go through strength. So you learn to encourage yourself for who you are and you say I will go wherever God sends me to go. You learn to encourage yourself for who you are and you say I will go wherever God sends me to go. Because what, even if you work to become someone else, you just waste your time. You get tired for no reason. You have something special that the taller one you admire does actually not have. That there are many preachers. But you destroy your own faith by saying, I want to be like the other one. And when you get a microphone, even, even if he speaks hallelujah, the demons scatter. For brethren, the voice he has given you and you say hallelujah, believing that God called me. Demons will run away even better than the other one you are looking after. So that's why I tell you brothers and sisters, wherever God has put you and given you whether to help or clean that's where God has given you strength and do it with all your ability no, knowing that your reward he is the one that is going to get you when he crowns you you will be satisfied so don't dis uh, discourage yourself by saying I am not even worthy or I cannot encourage yourself and say I am worthy and I will overcome for when I'm correcting my children in the house at times I rebuke them I tell them off and I'll not be happy with them but after that I go back and call them and I speak to them and I'll tell them that even though I rebuked you because you did that I wasn't happy but I can see you can do actually better that every time they hear that encouragement they look at each other and they begin, they begin to smile because of my words of encouragement and sometimes there are some things we, we do and we think God will never forgive you he will never forgive me this is so bad is our God that is full of mercy. There are sometimes when you feel that the souls of your children are souls down. So what the devil does is to oppress you and so you oppress your children too. Or you oppress those who are around you. And so you don't even go back to encouraging yourself. So they also deteriorate and lose their hope and happiness. But I want, what I wanted to tell the parents as well that even even when you are correcting our children, there is that spirit that does not want us to humble ourselves. But when you go back and encourage them, it motivates them as well. So they can probably bring back a bad report from school. And you probably will feel that it's so bad and you're not happy with them. But when you encourage them again, and you tell them, oh yes, you were not able to do it here, but I know you can do it. I tell my children that you are better than all children at school. Even if I know that there are some children that are better than them. I accompany them with words of encouragement and I tell them that when you sit in class, look at them 
them and that you are better than them. And then you see them walking with their head straight into class saying we are going to be better than all of them. So if you walk into that as well, that even when they get a challenge outside there, they will know that their parents encourage them. It is the God that is there to encourage us. That even if you feel discouraged, he is stretching out his hands. He is saying, Come. He says, Come. Come, let me give you strength. Let me support you. Let me help you through. I'm going to overcome those battles on your behalf. I'm going to help you win. That which has discouraged you should not tell you, take you away from your, my presence. I am here with you. But when the situation hits you, that's, the, the, that's what the devil likes. That's, he says, oh, I've got to this one. Ah, I've finished there. That's what we don't want. We we want to stand so that when the devil hears that you are in trouble, he will also run away from us. We want to stand so that when the devil hears that we are here, he also run away from us. God can make you become that, no, and you will stand, no, and you will overcome. Let us lift up our voices to pray, and then we are going to call upon the Lord to take us back into His presence. Where we got born again. Where we used to enjoy the word of God. We used to enjoy worship. We used to see where you could minister in the house. You saw people that you could minister to. You helped many people. But one discouraged you and you stopped helping. The one that refused to pay you and you said I don't need them anymore. Maybe God was preparing you. Brethren, use some situation and say let me arise again. Maybe that's the situation God will help me go through to show me that you are strengthening me. So you can rise up again. That you can be strengthened. That you can have new prayers. Maybe someone talked up, spoke to me about your body and then you said no. If that person said this, yes, that means I'm not one. I told you when they told me that I had my, my big legs. I used to tie it every night so it could become small. I never had that mentality that that's how God created me. I wanted to oppress my body. There is something you are oppressing in your life. But you cannot change it. That's how God created it. And that's what God wants to use. For another person needs the same thing you have. But now you are oppressing your body. Sometimes you might even get sick. You have discouraged yourself. You cannot stand in people. Because someone said. Those words God is going to annul them, nullify them. And He will give you strength. And He will stand again. And He will take you back where He called you. Let us pray that the Lord will help us to rise and to walk in the strength Thank you, 
tuwe tolo dete miso wala tuko za secho chewa tuliti na kukola katonda wange kuhulika kakawa kwa waka okutu wanido kutuko zesa okutu wanido kutuko zesa wetu ino kubela ama mwe tutu setu la bate tuso wala kwe yongela yo oba we tutu setu la bate tuso wala kuhimu kandate kufuke choche tuwale katonda wango so wala kuchiza na tengo tamu la tata ngo hita mwyeru sale mimukama tukome kwa kwa waka wa waka waka totu hita kwa maseka tiga fetu kwe taka ye kwa hizo kutu ya mbaka waka 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 ye kwa hizo kutu wandula we taso wala kwa anjuliwa ye kwa hizo kutu semba we taso wala kusembewa kakano tukomye wa maso wa mukama kakati tukwa mu maso wa katonda wange kwe chila anga chibichi echa wamba nechitu kwa ta nechitu kula nechitu zema lega nechitu kwa ta nechitu nyika wansi mu masi kakano tusabu tukwa tide kosebo tusabu tulongo Kabaka kabaka kabaka, tu sabo tu sumuru le kabaka kabaka kabaka, tu sabo tu sasi le kabaka kabaka kabaka. Eti biye choto chini kwa ida mukama, tu chia yamuru le kabaka kabaka kabaka, tu chia gana, tu komi e wamu kubela wamu mukama. Tuze budi ya tondo mwezewa, tu kuati le kosebo, bota tu yamba tu wali aiza kutu yamba, bota tu sasi la tu wali aiza kutu sasi la, tu eta boku we boku fajoli mukama, tu eta boku damo kuli de dogozi yomo kama, ne dogozi yoto bade te tu chali uliwa, already visa bitu mala mo amani, already visa bitu boku kili za kwafe, ngate tu chia sola na boku kili za kava 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 kava, ngatu la ba no boku kili za utali mu, ngatu la mani tu sola boku kuzesa ngo bunafu wa febutu yenzo bunji mukama ngabutu zitowele de tata tugama anti gwe mani ga feka akano tugama anti gwe subiri ya feka baka 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 tugama anti tuze yawo kabaka baka baka tuze yawo mukisacho mukama tuze yawo mukubera kabaka baka baka gula matuga fena masoka fa ko moyo okuri ano gula bebyo byo tulaga kabaka baka baka jawe misambu kabaka baka baka ejiri mu masoka fe Eji kutoa ba umagenda gafe, eji tuziiza kavaka, e sosi gezi tuziiza, go hizo kuziseje zano mukono kwa wamani mukama, go hizo kutoa ni de mukono gafe, wele zama malai kama mukama, be wasaini gakula mukafe, o kutoe tolola, o kutu. Namia, o kutuwa ni dilo kutagua mimi nyonge la vestani ya tazwe ni bula muafu, tu gani tata kwa 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 kwa, o kubela replace tika tonda wange, ni mnyo yajia gala kwa 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 kwa, o kubela replace tule me kutu kili secho tule me kufunye choto tule me kufungule kwa 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 kwa, e yote watu tete kila katonda mwezwa, tu sabo tu longa me katonda wange, o demo tu kulembero demo tu kuzi seta tu mimi nzawa bichiinto, o demo tu esiki seta tata kwa 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 muri mugo, o demo tu Tuwe sige setata kwa 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 tuwe chilo kukola kwa 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 Necho katonda wange chila huo mukisa Webale kubangoli katondo mwesigwa Webale kubangoli katondo wamani Echitiwa netendo vikundile katonda wange Kubango sobole lo inza kuna Webale yesu Webale umusu mwuruji Oh, my God.
mukama fevaziwe akabunge skalero tubuli de munimi ezo mbitwe baza mukama olwa mu mwena basobodo kubera ko we really thank god for whoever's connected now we want to give those who are regular members you know that we give on paper and using the church account but if you're a visitor for the first time please uh, also you can give and we have our PayPal, the PayPal the email is kingdomlovegiving at gmail.com. Kingdomlovegiving at gmail.com. You can also download our app, U-Turn TV. We have four channels and we want to appreciate everyone that has been on Kingdom Love Radio, those who connected through U-Turn channel, those of you connected through YouTube, U-Turn TV on YouTube, and U-Turn TV on Facebook. God bless you. Let's pray for the offering. We will worship God in one song. And then I will declare a blessing. Father God, we thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for Mami. Thank you for Mami Rita's word. And we thank you because you have blessed us. Thank you for whoever has been instead, those who have been sharing the scripture. Now we are going to give. We pray for those who are giving tonight through PayPal, through the account and all other channels. Bless the work of their hands. There are those who don't have any job, anything, Lord, we pray that you give them jobs. As we worship you, Lord, accept our offering. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Abalumwa emisota, abayisina eri, uloko. want to thank God for those who are giving, those who have given already. Uh, we rely uh, on your giving. We also want to give you a special invitation this coming Sunday. If you don't have a church or you are in, a you are in the area of London, come and visit us in Forest Gate. We have a celebration. We'll have food served. We'll have music, powerful worship, and a visiting preacher, Pastor Joshua. So if you come, you will definitely be blessed. We will also have Holy Communion because we have a feeling that that will be a special day that God will minister to all of us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for the word, Mommy. May God bless you. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Mwe wana ba share linzebiya wandi kiwa. Mwe ba linyo buli omudi ovude. Mukama ba wamuksa ba bade kumikutu ejenja ulo kuredio kuyutani chano kuingdom love kuyutani TV kuyutio kuyutani TV ku Facebook. God richly bless you. Amen. Amen.